Well, come in, Mrs. Hudson. There's a Miss Morstan to see you, sir. Ah, yes. Thank you. Will you step this way, please, Miss? Thank you. Miss Morstan, I am Sherlock Holmes, my colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do you do? Please, Miss Morstan. Thank you. It is kind of you to see me, Mr. Holmes. Why, not at all. Any friend of Mrs. Cecil Forrester's. Well, I'm her companion, really, but yes, we are friends. But you say you are the only daughter of Captain Morstan of the 34th Bombay Infantry. Is your father alive? We were to have met at the Langham Hotel. He'd just come home on leave from the Andaman Islands. He'd registered and left his luggage there, but they told me he had gone out and... Well, there's never been a single trace of him since. Great heavens, come off the police. Everything's been tried. And when was this? Ten years ago. Ten years? My dear Miss Morstan, had you come to me ten years oh, ago? I'm not asking you to look for him, Mr. Holmes. I'd resigned myself long ago to never seeing him again. I came to show you these. Thank you. Uh, these are flawless. Perfect specimens. Never been strung. No holes. Every year for the past six years, on the anniversary of my father's disappearance, one of those pearls has come through the post. But there's never been a letter or anything to say who sends them. Remarkable. Until this week. And that's why I came to you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Hmm. Postmark London Southwest, dated 7th of November. Ah, a man's thumbprint in the corner. Probably the postman's. Best quality envelope. Six pence a packet. Mm. You are a wronged woman. A carriage will call for you tomorrow evening at five o'clock and bring you to your unknown friend and you shall have justice. If you are distrustful, bring two companions, but no police and no signature. But that means five today. Was there a pearl with us? Yes. Same sender then. What are you going to do, Miss Morstan? I came to ask Mr. Holmes. Miss Morstan, this is clearly a disguised hand, but I should not want to give any false hopes. Is there any trace of your father in this I've writing? I've examined every word, every letter. There isn't the slightest resemblance. Have you anything else which might help us? I found this in Papa's belongings. I don't know whether... Thank you. Ah, yes. This looks like paper of native Indian manufacture. Look, four crosses in a line. The sign of four. And some names. John Sholto, Arthur Morstan, Jonathan Small, Mohammed Singh. This means nothing to you, Miss Morstan? Nothing. Mostert? Still, it may be important. Now, your letter says that you may bring two companions on tonight's adventure. If you are prepared to accept Dr. Watson and myself as your companion... I should be proud and happy to be of any service. Oh, if you would. But it says there must be no police. Uh, I am no policeman. No. I am the last and highest court of appeal in detection. When the official police are out of their depth, the matter is laid before me. I examine all the data and pronounce a specialist opinion. I claim no credit. The work itself is my highest reward. May I expect you then at Mrs. Forrester's before five? You may indeed. Now, please, will you take your pearls but leave the letter and the diagram with me? Au revoir, Miss Morstan. Au revoir, Mr. Holmes. What a very, very attractive woman. Is she? Sometimes you are positively inhuman. My dear Watson, I assure you that the most winning woman I ever knew was hanged for poisoning three little children for their insurance money. No, my dear fellow, a client to me is a mere unit, a factor in a problem. Oh, dash it all, Holmes. Even you could hardly, hardly call a sweet woman like that a mere factor in anything, anything at all. Now, look, 
It's a four-wheeler. My dear, that makes at least 24 wheelers and half a hundred hansoms passed here in the last half hour. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, do you think it's safe for Mary to go? Don't worry. Uh, forgive me, my dear, but after nearly ten years, I feel responsible. And somehow, these fogs... Have no fear, madam. Miss Morton will be in no danger. Come in. There's a, a person to see Miss Morton, ma'am. Well, I told you there would be, said a girl. Yes, ma'am. But he's... He's... Uh, he's... Yes, well, just show him in and don't be a goose. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good evening. This is the lady? I am Miss Morton. One cab is waiting. These gentlemen are coming with me. Police? No. You are giving your words. You have our assurance. Come. Be careful. Don't worry. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Forrester. See a blessed thing. <laughs> Rochester Row. Now Vincent Square. And then I fancy into Vauxhall Bridge Road. We appear to be making for the Surrey side. Keep smiling, Miss Morstan. I'm all right, really, Doctor. Just a little. Yes, I know. Anticipation's the worst part of any adventure, I always think. I suppose so. Mm, yes. I remember in Afghanistan, I used to feel scared stiff waiting for something to happen. And as soon as it started, I'd be as right as rain. I can't imagine you afraid, Dr. Watson. Oh, yes. Mind you, um, if something happens suddenly, it doesn't matter how nasty, you don't have time to think. You no time to worry how it'll all turn out. I, um... I remember the time... Uh, when was it? Oh, yes. Autumn 79 in India, with the Northumberlands, before they attached me to the Berkshires, you know. Really? Yes. Well, uh, there I was, um, sleeping alone in my tent, uh, middle of the night, when suddenly uh, I woke, shot bolt upright, just like that. Oh. And the lamp was still lit, and I was just in time. I was just in time to see it look into my tent. What was it? Wandsworth Road, Larkhall Lane, Stockwell Place, Cold Harbour Lane. Hmm. Hey. Our quest does not appear to be taking us to very fashionable regions. Oh, good, good Lord, Miss Morton. I, you know, I'd, I'd almost forgotten what we were about, thanks to your company. So had I. Thanks to you, Dr. Watson, I'm not a bit afraid anymore. I never get your limits, my dear Watson. There are unexplored possibilities about you. Thank you, Holmes. <laughs> However, we shall have to postpone exploring them until another time. We have arrived. Your servant, Miss Morstan. Your servant, gentlemen. Pray step into my little sanctum, a small place but my own. An oasis of art in the howling desert of South London. Hmm? Hmm? Hmm. Please. Sholto. I beg your pardon? That is my name. Oh. This, of course, is Miss Morstan. 
And these gentlemen... Uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do you do? But surely, if your name is Short... A younger twin of the late Major John Sholto, the 34th Bombay Infantry. I thought there must be some connection. My father was with a Major Sholto in the regiment. Your late father. I knew in my heart he was dead. Miss Morstan, I can give you every information, and I will. And what is more, I can do you justice. Whatever Brother Bartholomew may say. Yes, indeed I will. Brother Bartholomew? My brother. You are a wronged woman, my dear. And I have summoned you here to right that wrong. But we must have no officials. And no police, you do understand me. These gentlemen are friends. Oh, I am very glad to hear that. <laughs> you must forgive all these precautions, but as you can see, I am a man of refined tastes, and there is nothing more unesthetic than a policeman. Hmm? Hmm? Mr. Sholto, my father... Yes, bear with me, dear lady. We will have to go across to Norwood to visit my brother, Bartholomew. He is very angry with me for taking what seems to me to be the only proper course. Uh, but first, of course, I must lay the facts before you. I trust you have no objection to tobacco smoke. The balsamic odour of eastern tobacco. No, no, not at all. But please... Too gracious. I am a little... nervous. And I find it an invaluable sedative. But... to proceed. Some eleven years ago, my father retired from his regiment and came to live at Pondicherry Lodge, Upper Norwood. He brought with him his Indian servant, old Lal Chowda, and a great many possessions. Hmm? Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, one night, uh, as my brother and I later learned, your father, Captain Boston, came to visit my father. They quarreled violently, it seems, and uh, your father, I regret to say, suffered a seizure and fell dead upon the spot. Oh, if I distress you, I... No, no. Knowing is better than wondering. Quite so, quite so. My father, it appears, fearful of being accused of Captain Boston's death, <laughs> confided in his servant. And Lal Chowder suggested that they should bury the body and say nothing. How could they do such a thing? Monstrous. Quite despicable if this is true, sir. It was my father's deathbed confession, Mr. Doctor. The reason for Captain Morstan's visit was that while they were serving together in the Andaman Islands, they and some others came into the possession of a box containing a fabulous hoard known as the Agua Treasure. My father, by a trick, gained sole command of the box and hurried with it to England. He told my brother and myself that it was hidden about the very premises. He would tell us where to find it, but first we must promise to seek out Morstan's daughter and convey to her her rightful share. Also, one further thing, we were to beware of any wooden-legged man seen lurking near the lodge. We both agreed to this, and my father summoned his strength to speak again, when... No! Give him out! For God's sake, give him out! <laughs> We searched the grounds, but we could find no trace of an intruder with or without a wooden leg. And of course, we scoured every inch of Pondicherry Lodge and its surroundings for a trace of the treasure.
Rightly or wrongly, Miss Marston, we thought it best to leave your father there in peace. I see. Thank you for being frank with me. It is why I invited you here. Mr. Schulter, if I were to mention the word pearls to you... I would reply, sir, you are correct. Ever since my father's deathbed confession, I have felt very deeply the wrong done to this dear young lady. It was my wish to be in touch with her immediately and to tell all, but Brother Bartholomew, his is a somewhat rougher personality than my own, forbade it. Therefore, I have done what little I can to recompense Miss Morstan by sending her anonymously each year one pearl. A part of the treasure. A broken one by one of a little chaplet that my father retained to remind him of his treasure. I accept your explanation. So do I, Mr. Shelter. I don't see that you could have behaved differently in all this. If you will accept my thanks, I think we ought to be leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shelter, really, sir? <laughs> Oh dear! Oh dear me! You must, you must not begrudge me the enjoyment of my little dramatic effect. Dramatic effect? Now look here, sir. Do be considerate. I, I, I refer, sir, to the to the disclosures still to come. The treasure is found. Now, now. Back, back, Pat. Pat. How's that? Sahib, all fog is gone. Ah, splendid. Nevertheless, I think perhaps it would be better if I buttoned up well. My health is a little fragile, you see. Ah. Yes, my brother, Bartholomew, is a very clever fellow, do you see? He worked out that the height of Pondicherry Lodge was 74 feet, but that the total height of all the rooms was only 70. So he, he broke a hole through the ceiling of the upper room where our father died and found above a four-foot cavity. And there lay the box containing the Agua treasure. Hmm? Hmm? Hmm. So let us proceed to Pondicherry Lodge where we shall be expected, if not exactly welcomed. Here. I've had no orders about these. I told my brother last night I was bringing friends. He's not been out of his room all day, and I've no orders. I can't let you in. These must stop where they are. Oh, really, McMurdo, this is too bad of you. I'm very sorry, Mr. Thaddeus, but I don't know anything about them. Oh, yes, you do, McMurdo. No, you. Well, don't you remember the amateur who fought three rounds with you at Allison's rooms on your benefit night? Not, not Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Much the same. Gosh, <laughs> too, instead of standing there so quiet, if you'd just stepped up and give me that cross hitter you was under the jewel, I'd have known you without question. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, sir. Thank you. And your friends. You see, Watson, if all else fails, I still have one of the scientific professions open to me. Yes, <laughs> You're one that's wasting your gift, you are. Mrs. Bernstos. Oh, thank goodness you've come. It's the master. He locked himself in his room and wouldn't answer me. But where is this room? I... It's up here. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, 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 Miss Morton. Better wait for this lady here. Very well. Good. Bartholomew? Bartholomew! It's Thaddeus! What? You must get this door open. Come along. Wait here, Mr. Shorter. My God! The sign of four again. Holmes, what can it mean? It means murder, Watson. Look here. Some sort of thorn. It's a dart from a blowpipe. Now be careful. No doubt it's poisoned. The mystery grows darker, Holmes. On the contrary, Watson, it gets clearer every minute. Ah! Master Thaddeus! The treasure! 
They robbed him of the treasure. We put it back in the ceiling. We bought it up the hole. When was this? Last night. I, I, I left him here. I heard him lock up. As I went downstairs. What time was this? Ten o'clock. Now he's dead. He's dead. He's, he's murdered. And the police are going to suspect me. No, no, Mr. Thaddeus. Oh, sir. yes, yes, yes. Uh, but you, you can't think so, can you? Because after all, I, I, I wouldn't have brought you here, would I? What a man. You have nothing to fear, <laughs> Mr. Schulte. Go and report the matter to the police. To the police? Offer to help them in every way. Dr. Watson and I shall stay here. McMurdo, you go with him. Aye, uh, sir. Come with me, Mr. Thaddeus. Yes, ah, Watson. We have a few minutes to ourselves. Let us put them to good use. Very well, Holmes. What is it you want us to do? Sit down, my boy, and let me expound. Now, whoever came in here could not have used that door because it was locked on the inside. So, now what about a window? Ah. Yes, it is also secured on the inside. There's no drain pipe near. And the roof is quite out of reach. And yet a man has entered by this window. How do you prove that? Yep. It rained last night. Now, here on the sill is the print of a boot in mould and a circular muddy patch. And here. And here. But, but that isn't a footmark. No, it is something much more valuable. The wooden-legged man. Exactly, but someone else has been in here too. Now, Watson, mm -hmm. look outside that window. Could you scale that wall? Absolutely impossible. But if you had an ally in here with a good stout rope secured to that hook, then I think you might swarm up wooden leg and all. Easily. Yes. You would get away in the same fashion, and then your ally would pull in the rope, secure the window, and get away by the route he originally used. Yes, but who was he? How did he get up here? Well, down the chimney. No, the grate's too small. Watson. Hmm? How often have I said to you, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth? Oh, very often. Very well, then. It applies now. We know he didn't come through the door, through the window, or down the chimney. So? The hole in the roof! Exactly. If you would have the kindness to hand me that lantern. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes, this leads to the roof itself. This is the way the ally entered and left. Oh. Confoundedly dusty up here. Yes, fortunately. Look, Watson, what do you make of those? There. Good heavens, Holmes. A child has done this horrible thing. Hmm. There's nothing more to be learned up here. Let us go down again. Come along. Those footmarks, Holmes. Why, we are in luck. Our mysterious friend has trodden in some creosote from this cracked car boy. Oh, yes, so he has. What then? Why, we've got him. I know a dog who will follow that scent to the world's end. The police already. Watson, quickly. Feel this poor fellow's muscles. Hard as a board. Now, coupled with the distortion on his face, what does that suggest to you? Death from some, uh, some powerful vegetable alkaloid. Quite so. Now, Watson. Examine this. Well, well, well. Here's a pretty business. The house is as full as a rabbit warren. Oh, Lord. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the theorist. Inspector Jones. Hello. Uh, evening, Doctor. Well, what's all this? It's a bad business, eh? Bad business. What did he die of? Oh, this is hardly a case for me to uh, theorize over. Uh. Door locked, I understand. How about the window? Fastened, but there are marks on the sill. Mm. Well, if it was fastened, they don't count. Oh, I see. Ha! Huh? I've got it. These slashes come upon me at times. Now, Sholto was here with his brother last night. The brother dies in a fit, and Sholto walks off with the treasure. How's that? After which the dead man very considerately gets up and locks the door on the inside. Yes. Yes, there is a flaw there somewhere. But anyway, Thaddeus Sholto was here with his brother, and so you see I'm weaving the web around him. <laughs> what about this splint of wood? Poisoned, I believe, taken from the dead man's scuff. And this diagram? 
House is full of Indian gewgaws. And that card, it's some hocus pocus. No, the only real question is, now how did he get out, eh? Aha! Uh -huh. Ha ha! Through there. Exit to the roof, I'll bet. Sergeant, ask Mr. Sholto to step this way. Mr. Sholto, it is my duty to inform you that anything you say may be put in evidence and used against you. And I arrest you in the Queen's name as being concerned in the death of your brother. There. What did I tell you? Do not worry, Mr. Sholto. I will clear you. Don't promise too much, Mr. Theorist. Not only will I clear him, Mr. Jones, but I will make you a present of the name and description of one of the men who were here last night. Indeed. Indeed. His name is Jonathan Small. Description, active, middle-aged, sunburnt, his right leg missing, wearing a wooden stump in its place. Now, the other man... Well? Well, he is rather a curious person. Before very long, I hope to be able to introduce you to the pair of him. Excuse me one moment. Take Miss Lawston home. And Watson, no dilly-dallying. Then go to number three, Pinching Lane, Lambeth. It's a taxidermist and pet shop. Sherman's the name. Tell him I want Toby at once. The dog? Toby the dog. Bring Toby back here in a cab while I make one or two inquiries and study the great Jones's methods. <laughs> now, gentlemen. Come on, Toby. Come on, good dog. Little self-control now. Come on. Here you go. Ah, oh. oh, well done, Watson. You've got him. Good old Toby. <laughs> Where is everybody now? Oh, we've had great goings on. Jones has arrested not only Thaddeus Sholto, but McMurdo, Mrs. Burnstone, and the Indian servant as well. Oh, oh, ridiculous. <laughs> Quite. But he left me free to do a little more investigating. Mm. Watson, are you game for a six-mile trudge? Certainly. Splendid. Now, come along. Come along, Toby boy. Here, here. Now smell that. Creosote, Watson. He'll lead us straight to whoever made those marks. Good day, madam. Is Mr. Maury K. I. Smith at home? He ain't here. Oh, he's away, is he? Since yesterday morning, oh. sir. But if it was about a boat, you'd better come in. Oh, thank you. I wanted to hire his steam launch. Why, he's gone in that. Oh. No, there ain't the more coals in that. Then we'll take it to Woolwich and back. I can't think where he can have got to, and that's a fact. He might have bought some more coal. It ain't his way. Besides, I didn't like the man who hired it. Oh, who was that? The one with the wooden leg. A wooden leg? Yeah. Him has roused me man up yesternight, and away they went without so much as a word. Uh, was this man alone? As far as I know. Oh, well, well, I'm sorry about this, because I've heard such good reports of the, um, oh, let me see now, what's her name? The, um, The Aurora? The Aurora, yes, of course. Green with a yellow line broad in the beam. Oh, no, she's fresh painted, oh, white with a brass bow. Oh, so, of course. Drat that little perish her. Uh, never mind, madam. My friend oh. and I will make other arrangements. Some other time, perhaps. Thank well, you so much. Come along, Watson. Well, and you, Toby. Well, good day, madam. Good many, day. many thanks. Oh. Got your wire, sir. Three bob and a tanner for tickets. Good. Now we in. Here are your instructions. 
I want you to find for me a steam launch called the Aurora. Newly painted, white with a brass funnel. Got that, sir? But she's downriver somewhere. I want one boy posted at Morty K. I. Smith's landing stage opposite Millbank to report if she comes back there. Righto, Governor. And the old scale of pay and a guinea for the boy who finds her. Here is a day in advance. Off you go. What a rabble. <laughs> they can go everywhere, see everything, overhear everyone. You know, Holmes, I've been mm -hmm. thinking. Those tiny footmarks in that attic. Tiny, naked footmarks. Hmm. Great agility, small poisoned darts. Does that suggest anything to you? Yes, uh, some sort of savage. A pygmy! From the Andaman Islands, remember? Morston and Sholto both served there. Mm. Ah. ah, it's the Andaman Islands, 340 miles to the north of Sumatra. It, ah, the Aborigines of the Andaman Islands. They perhaps claim the distinction of being the smallest race on Earth, do you see? Yes. Average height, rather below four feet. A fierce, morose people, though capable of forming devoted friendships when once their confidence has been gained. Mark that, Watson. Cannibal habits. Dear me. We'd better return our young friend Toby. Yes. <laughs> yes sir, I might as well run over to Camberwell on my way there and uh, call in on Mrs. Forrester. Oh? Mrs. Forrester? Yes. And on Miss Morstan, too, of course. Ah, they'll be anxious to hear what's happened. Don't tell them too much, Watson. Women are never to be entirely trusted, even the best of them. Oh, what an atrocious sentiment, Holmes. The fruit of experience, my dear fellow. Now, come along, Toby. There we are, faithful little friend. What about the porky? Hey, come along. <coughs> Watson? Hmm? Off you go. <laughs> But it's a romance, a wrong damsel, a chest of treasure, a cannibal, a villain with a wooden leg, and two knights errant. <laughs> oh, the pleasure is ours, believe me. Think, Mary, your fortune depends on this. I'm more concerned for Mr. Thaddeus Sholto than for my fortune. He's behaved so kindly and honorably in all this. I'm sure he's quite innocent. We must clear him, Doctor. Yes, poor Mr. Oh, I'm Sholto. sure, my dear lady, you can depend on my friend Holmes to do that. Yes, <laughs> poor Mr. Sholto. How stupid the police must be. And Mr. Holmes does not intend to call them in on his search? Uh, no, not, uh, not until the last moment. He likes to work these things out for himself. I'm sure you haven't told us all, Doctor. All, ma'am? Well, for instance, you only said that Mr. Bartholomew Sholto was found dead. How did he die? Oh. Uh. These are grim details. Oh, come, Doctor. We're not easily frightened. He wants to spare our ears, Mary. <laughs> Such delightful ears. <laughs> Flattery will not put us off, Doctor. Now tell us every single thing, or you shan't have any more tea. Uh, perhaps Dr. Watson is in a hurry. Oh, no. No, 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 I assure you. Quite the reverse. Well, now, there are certain types of poisons. Vegetable alkaloids, that we call them that have peculiar effects upon the human constitution. Watson. Hmm. Watson, wake up. Hmm. Huh? I'm off down river. What, down river? At this time of night? I can see only one way out of this and it's worth trying. Oh, I'm coming with you. No, you will be more useful here. Oh. A message may come during the day. I want you to open all telegrams and notes and use your own judgment. Rely on me. How can I find you? I can't tell you. Why? I don't know myself. Holmes? Yes? Be careful. Come in. Mr. Athelney Jones, sir. Oh. Evening, Inspector. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Mr. Holmes out, I understand. Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, you care to uh, sit down, take a chair, uh, wait for him? Well, uh, thanks. Whew. It's deuce or not in here. Yes. I have no idea when you'll be back. Eh? I have no idea when he will be back. Ah, oh, I see. Yes, yes. Uh. 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 Cigar? Uh, well, I, I don't mind if I do. Uh, 
Uh, excuse me. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, and soda? Uh, well, uh, just uh, half a glass. <laughs> Now, you know my theory about this Norwood case? Yes, I have heard it. Yes, well, I better think again. Oh, have you? Yes. I got my net round Sholto, when pop, he goes through a hole in the middle. Oh, how was that? Well, it proved an unshakable alibi. From the moment he left his brother's room, he was never out of the sight of someone or other. Your very best respect, sir. Uh. Ah. ah, so then he could not have been the person who climbed the roof. Quite, quite. Um, well, now, sir, uh, I'd be very glad of a little help. Yes, yes. Well, they all need help sometimes. Yes. Ah, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, he's, he's a wonderful man. He's a man who's not to be beat. I never saw the case yet that he couldn't throw a light on. A day regular in his methods and perhaps a bit quick in his theories, but on the whole, you know, I, I believe he'd have made a most promising police officer. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be very gratified to hear you say that, Inspector. Now then, I had a telegram from him this morning. <clears throat> uh, go to Baker Street at once. Am close on track. If you come with us, you can be in at the finish and sent from Poplar. Huh? He's picked up the scent again. Uh, ah, then he's been on a false chase too. You see, even the best of us get thrown off course at times. <laughs> a touching confession, Inspector. Holmes! Ah, I'm very glad to see you, Mr. Holmes. And how has your case gone? Yeah, oh, badly, sir. Oh. Badly, yes. I've had to release two of my prisoners and I've got no evidence against oh. the others. Well, never mind. We'll find you some more. Well, you, you've got them? Not yet. Watson, hmm? our young friends have found what we were seeking. Good! And I have it that 8.30 is the crucial time. Now, Inspector, uh, you must put yourself under my orders. Now, half a yes minute. Yes or no? Agreed. Capital. I shall want a fast police boat to be at Westminster Stairs at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll telephone for one. And she must have no markings to identify her. I shall also need two good men in case of resistance. We are dealing with dangerous characters. There they are! Pull ahead, Coxon! No, gentlemen, I don't reckon I can swing for it. I wanted that treasure, yes. That rat John Sholto had got my share of it, and the others too. And many a long year it took for me to track him down. But he died of fright. I was little devil tongue that fired the dart into Bartholomew Sholto. But you must have known he had that blowpipe. What did you think he was going to shoot out of it? Peas? Oh, it's part of his trapping, like his clothes, his bead necklace. I never thought he'd use it. He'd always behave decent all the years we'd been mates. A very convenient, quiet way of doing a murder for you. I tell you, I never have let him, never. He used it again today. I tried to stop him. It's true, Inspector. I saw Tonga push him aside. Thank you, sir. Well, that's for the 
the jury to decide. Well, now, how did you know that the treasure was found and where to find it? Chateau's servant. He knew he'd get his share if he ever passed the word. A fine fat share he'd have got from you. And where was you off to? Holland? That's about it. Small. The fourth man of the four. Was that Tonga? Not he. It was an Indian. Dead years ago. Tonga chummed up with me in the Andamans. Been everywhere together since. Never knew he'd turn out such a hellhound, though. Uh, we're coming into the wharf. Well, we'll save the rest of it for at the yard. You know, gents, it's almost funny. You've got nothing to laugh at, my lad. It's just it. Here I am, with a fair claim to half a million. I've searched for it all these years, and now I'm like to spend the rest of my years digging drains on dark. A penny for them. I beg your pardon? Your fault, dear. You were a long way away from here. Oh, I'm sorry. How rude of me. I was thinking about Dr. Watson. That is Dr. Watson and Mr. Holmes. It's nearly two days since we've had any news. I'm sure the good doctor will be here as soon as he has anything to report. I do hope they're not in any danger on my account. My dear Mary, they're grown men and perfectly able to look after themselves, I'm sure. And what about those poor Sholto brothers? There's one dead and the other in prison. Mr. Holmes is far too clever for anything like that to happen to him. Come in. Excuse me, ma'am. There's a gentleman. Dr. Watson. No, miss. Mr. Sholto. Mr. Sholto? Oh, Mrs. Forrester, this is Mr. Thaddeus Sholto, who should be in... Well, that is, who was in... Oh, you're free. <laughs> this is an unexpected pleasure, Mr. Sholto. Dear lady, Miss Boston, I hope I may be forgiven for calling at what might be an inopportune time. Have you got a message from Mr. Holmes? Yes, that is the very thing I was about to ask you. Since my release, I have been most anxious for some word concerning my mother's assassin and the uh, recovery of the Agua treasure. Of course. But I called upon Mr. Holmes, but unfortunately he was not there. I regret, Mr. Sholto, that like you, we are empty of news. Oh. But uh, may I offer you some tea? <laughs> that is most kind. Mm. Oh, forgive me, but uh, is it Darjeeling? Uh, yes. Oh, in that case, uh, it will be a pleasure, and I'm most grateful. <laughs> I find the SM leaf a trifle strong for my taste. Have you no idea where Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson might be? Oh, my dear, how could I be so cruel as to keep any such information from you? But perhaps I might be forgiven for this intrusion if I come to the second reason for my calling upon you. The second reason? Yes. I come to offer you something which I beg you not to refuse. Oh, Mr. Sholto. Uh, I hardly feel... Uh, Mr. Sholto, your tea. Hmm? Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, how very kind. Yes, thank you. Miss Boston. Uh, would you rather I left you, Mr. Sholto? Oh, thank you. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, dear, 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 Mrs. Forrester. No, indeed. I, um... Oh, yes. I ask you to accept this. Oh. Uh, you may open it. Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Sholto. Oh, they're beautiful. The remaining eight from the chaplet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my brother Bartholomew would gnash his teeth to know that you had any part of the treasure, yet I feel... As I've always felt, that those pearls are yours. I don't know what to say. How to thank you for your kindness and generosity to me. I am only trying to give you what is yours by right. Oh, forgive me, Mrs. Forrester, for preventing your maid from announcing me. Oh, I beg your pardon. I did not know that you were entertaining. Dear Dr. Watson, have you any news? Mr. Sholto is as eager to hear as the rest of us. Uh, yes, indeed, indeed. Oh. Yes, yes, of course. Well, the man who took the treasure is under lock and key. And here is the treasure. You have recovered it. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, I can't believe it. One reads of treasure. One never expects to see the real thing. Open it and let us see it. 
Oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, but aren't we going to see more on the box? Oh, well, uh, I'm sure if we all went along to the police station, the police would open it and Dr. then... Dr. Watson? Yes? Do you know so little about women? Not at all. I mean... Mary, my dear, what would you say to a gentleman who refuses to open the box? Oh, nothing at all. Uh, but, but the police... And after Mr. Shalter's great generosity in letting us have a glimpse of what the treasure contains, with his kind present of the pearls, I would think very badly, Doctor. But you, you Very see... badly, indeed. Oh, well, perhaps, uh, just a peep. Splendid. Mary must open it. Have you the key? Ah, well, that's part of the point. You see now, Small, hmm? uh, Small, the, the one who took the treasure, well, he says that he threw the key into the Thames. Oh, then we can't open it. Not very easily. Well, if I may make a suggestion, oh, with your permission, of course, perhaps we... Uh, one of us uh, could uh, force it open with one of the fire irons. An excellent idea. Bravo, Mr. Sholto. <laughs> well, Mrs. Forrester has no objections. None. Well, as you, sir, were the one to rescue the treasure, perhaps you should be the one to display its glories. Thank you. Yeah. If you'll allow me. <laughs> of course, I'm not a born artist at this sort of thing, you know. <laughs> no, but we will try our best. Oh. Mind your fingers. Yeah. Oh. oh. Ah, here we are. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Now, Miss Morstan, if you would just lift the lid. I feel quite nervous. <laughs> Great heavens! The treasure is at the bottom of the Thames. But Holmes, a fortune. Whatever did he do it for? Had you not rushed so precipitately to Miss Morstan, you would have heard Jonathan Small explain. He did not want any relation of either Sholto or Morstan to get a penny of the treasure. If he was not to keep it, no one was. Extraordinary. Unfortunately for Small, it was rather an emotional decision. I think he'll live to regret it. And I must say it seems a trifle hard upon your Miss Morstan. Hardly mine, Holmes. In fact, Miss Morstan was happy to find the box empty. She regarded the treasure as tainted. She was happy to know at last the truth about her father. Oh, remarkable. There is hope for womankind yet, if there are others like Miss Morstan. Love is an emotional thing. I shall never marry, lest I bias my judgment. Mm. I trust my judgment will survive it. You're weary, Holmes. You don't ask much of life, do you? Work, my dear Watson. A problem to solve is all I ask. I cannot live without brain work. Give me the pleasure of finding a field for my own peculiar powers. Give me work. This is my reward, and I am content.